So I've just released version 4.73 of GPVDM and I thought I'd make a quick video to go with uh, the, the release. So I've just fixed effectively loads of bugs. It's effectively a, a bug fix release. Um, people are starting to use the bug reporting system. I've had about 10 bugs reported that way so far and it's sort of really uh, helped me identify what people are having problems with um, with the model and where it crashes. So that's super handy. If you if you do have a bug, do, please do report it through the bug reporting system because it will help me fix the model and make it better. Um, I've also, whilst we're on the topic of bugs, fixed the impedance spectroscopy part of the model. So it was it was broken. Um, I don't use it very much myself, so that, that's why it gets broken. And, uh, and uh, I never notice it because uh, until somebody reports it, I don't actually I won't actually know it's broken. Um, I've also had a bit of a rewrite of the materials uh, database, which is uh, quite good. So if we if we start the model, so in this uh, in this uh, uh, tab here, you'll find this little picture of an atom now. And if you click on it, it'll open the materials database. So this is with all material, basically information about all the materials the model has. And previously. Um, the electrical information about the materials was stored um, effectively they weren't stored in a database they were just sort of freely edited within um, within whichever simulation you were using so there was no consistent data file for aluminium or P3HD or whatever but now what I've done is I've I've stored in the materials database effectively a um, the electrical parameters for every every material they're not all updated yet, but um, the code's there. So when it when you start when you select a new new material, it pulls in from material database the correct electrical file and will configure it for you, which is quite handy. What I've also done is I've uh, made the absorption and the uh, refractive index uh, data um, more accessible, and I've added a way here so you can actually um, so this is experimental data actually, and I've I've added a way so you can sort of build up um, absorption refractive index spectrum using equations and this is quite handy if you sort of um, are wondering what happens to the material if for example I don't know one peak disappears and what um, for absorption for example what this would do to device performance so effectively you divide, d define the start and stop region of your equation um, and uh, and this is th you can just put in an equation here and at the moment here I've got just a constant and this, this is generating this red line here so, for example, if I should change that, say one to the eight, you you can you can move that. You can put in quite complex equations there, so you can really define material shapes and sort of play with them and see how changing whatever parameter would affect the performance of the device. Um, and you can sort of put in multiple layers using these buttons here. I've also um, put in this button here, which is um, effectively a dollar per watt uh, cal calculator. So, if you click on that. It'll take you to an Excel spreadsheet, which is um, effectively will d defines the density of the material, the cost of the material per gra per kilogram, and the energy material per the the energy needed to make the material per um, kilogram. So what I'm going to do here eventually is have um, a very clear sort of description of how much this material costs and why it costs so much. So, for example, um, cost of mining, it, cost of extraction, and things like that. So you can really see. Um, where the cost of each material comes from and the energy in each pro in each step and the idea is you'll be able to effectively um, see uh, you'll be able to figure out very easily um, uh, why your particular solar cell that you've designed would be expensive or not expensive and along those lines so each material will have one of these spreadsheets associated with it and what the model does is it, pl is it plucks out of the spreadsheet the values here but of course these will be calculated using um, some sort of in-depth calculation at looking at the sort of extraction cost of the material from the earth um, and if you click on this button here this dollar per watt it'll then go through each layer of the model so here we've got um, ITO, PCBM, aluminium and oh, that's and it'll give you the volume of material in each square meter and then the mass and then the cost per uh, per square meter of the material, the energy taken to extract from the earth, and then it'll give you, um, the idea is it'll give you the total cost of the cell per meter and the total energy needs to um, extract from the earth. I haven't yet uh, filled in these values correctly in, in the spreadsheets, and that'll be a job for probably a, a, some type of a student project. 
um, and the idea is it'll also so you can see here it gives you a payback time so the idea is it'll be able to calculate payback time for whichever cell structure you design so that's I think that's that's going to be quite cool when that's working um, what else have I fixed um, yes um, there was a bug reported in this so this is the um, the snapshot um, viewer so if you want to plot for example the um, the current density as a function of so we're looking at JV curve as a function of voltage you can use this slider to look at um, any point on the JV curve and what the current density looks like in the cell um, so this is uh, you know point 154 on the JV curve so I suspect that's quite high voltage maybe one or two volts and you, you can look at it right from sort of zero to you know whatever whatever voltage oh, you can see the voltage there that's 0.86 volts and you can look at any any material um, any 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 device parameter so for example uh, recombination you can look at as a function of so this is in function of device position and pre previous so I think this worked previously maybe a bit buggy but now it works for sure but also what I've got is I've got this um, save video uh, thing so you can basically save so I don't know I'll call this save you can save a video of the of this of the simulation so if I click save now what it'll do is it'll start um, effectively scrolling through all the simulation results and plotting out so here we're looking at the um, recombination of the holes um, as a function of voltage so it's going through the whole simulation and it's it's plotting these out but at the same time what it's doing is it's saving these to a directory so you'll be able to if you've got some uh, movie software you'll be able to compile these into an AVI file on Linux it'll actually try and compile it into an AVI file for you if you've got I think it's memcoder installed um, but uh, yeah so that, that's 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 quite a handy feature I'll, I'll just let it run because otherwise it'll crash yeah so that's it basically um, there have been effectively a few stability fixes so things like um, uh, reading data files is now much better it's much more robust but apart from that it's sort of mainly a bug release so um, that's it thank you very much for watching